Hey, Anna Mouse One here. In this video, I'll be making a Japanese ramen for the main course and a strawberry. And no. Pretty interesting. I started by writing all of the ingredients that I would need out in a list. For the broth, tare, and aroma oils, I'll be following the guide by Pro Home Cooks and using other recipes for the cheshu pork, soft boiled eggs and the cake. All of this will be linked down below. I plotted out roughly what I would need to do when and figured out what I had and what I needed to buy. I bought most of what I needed, saving ingredients like strawberries for a separate shopping trip to make sure I had the freshest ones possible for the cake. And before I went to bed, I rinsed the bones under cold running water and put them in water to soak overnight. Wednesday I blanched the bones by boiling them for 15 minutes and then set them to simmer over a low heat that will slow cook for the rest of the day. Every so often I went back to remove any scum, stir it and top up the water. In the meantime I started on the aroma oils. I mixed 75 milliliters of vegetable oil with 65 grams of animal fat. Then I added crushed garlic and salad onions. I set this over a medium heat until the aromatics have browned. I then strained it into a bowl and that was the first element of the dish that I could call complete. Then for the tare, I mixed the water and kombu together and set it aside for 6 hours. If I knew what I was doing I might have done this ahead of time but I didn't so I didn't. I also had to cook dinner on Wednesday night so I decided to get ahead on that by making the salad. I chopped up the veggies, lettuce, pepper, cucumber and some more spring onions and my dad had requested that I throw in some croutons. I didn't know where they were in the supermarket and I'm too socially awkward to ask so I made some of my own by cutting up a slice of bread, adding some oil and paprika and baking them, moving them around a bit at the halfway mark to make sure that they cook evenly. I then added some aromatics to my bone broth which had been simmering away the entire time. And because the salad would make a pretty sorry dinner on its lonesome, I also made some jacket spuds. I stabbed the potatoes and before you say anything, I know that these aren't actually potatoes for jacketing, I'm just trying to use up leftovers with a fork. I put them on the baking sheet from earlier and gave them a coating of oil. Those went into the oven. I also started setting out some toppings for the jackets. Tuna with a little mayo for smoothing, cheese and butter. It was finally time to strain off the broth so I poured it through a sieve into a container. That's item 2, probably the one that I was most worried about, ticked off the list. Personally I like some baked beans with my spadingos so I cracked open a tin of those and heated it up over the stove. I sliced open the jacket spuds and we consumed. For something incredibly simple they are really fantastically tasty. I set about finishing the tare, luckily from here it was super easy. After letting the kombu water simmer for a bit and turning off the heat, I dissolved in some sea salt and I couldn't get any MSG and the recipe says that it's an optional anyway so I had to skip out on that. I then added the bonito flakes which is another term for katsuobushi and let it seep for 5 minutes. I drained the tare and bob your uncle, that's 3 down. So Thursday, first things first I wanted to bake the cake. For this recipe I needed cake flour which I didn't have so I made my own by adding some cornstarch to my all purpose flour. I then separated four eggs, beat some sugar, salt, honey and vanilla into the yolks. I was supposed to add some water but I forgot. Once that was yellow and ribbony I whisked up the whites and started beating in the sugar until I had a nice meringue texture. I folded some of the meringue mixture into the yolks and sifted in the flour and baking powder. I then mixed the oil into some of the batter and then added that into the main bulk of the batter. I added the rest of the meringue and folded that in. Put this into a lined cake tin and baked for 20 minutes and then left it on a cooling rack to, you know, cool. Then I moved on to the chashu pork. I mixed up a marinade of water, soy sauce, mirin and sugar. I set the pork off in some oil, then added the marinade and left it to slow cook. I'll add that I couldn't get a full pork belly but these strips that I got worked a treat. Once that was done I put it into a small container, marinade and all, and put it into the fridge to sit overnight. The only thing I had left to do was prep a marinade for the eggs. The marinade was comprised of soy sauce, mirin, water and sugar which I boiled up for a minute in a small saucepan. I boiled up four eggs and then stuck them in some icy cold water until they're cold. I removed the shells from the eggs, put them into a sandwich baggie along with the marinade and put it into the fridge. Friday, final day, first thing I had to do was finish the cake. I sliced the cake in half as easily as I could, which is to say not very, and then whipped up the whipping cream with some sugar and vanilla extract. I also sliced up some strawberries. I spread some of the cream across the cake and arranged the strawberry slices over it. I filled the gap with more cream. I put on the other layer of cake and spread the cream over everything. I arranged the remaining strawberry halves in the centre of the cake and then added some details with cream. I 
put strawberries in a circle around the edge and then went around both the top and bottom with more whipped cream. Overall I think it came out super cute and super Japanesey. But after all that, all I had to do was bring everything together. I say all, but there were a lot of things I had to do in a very short time. I sliced up some more spring onions and broke up some nori into squares. Poured boiling water into five bowls, one of which I used to heat up the eggs. I set off the noodle water, the beef broth, and a pan for the pork. I braised the pork, put in the noodles, and cut the eggs in half. I then went to the assembly, some tare aroma oils and noodles in each of the heated bowls, and then ladled in some of the broth. Put the toppings on, create these absolutely adorable bowls of ramen. It tasted great, and the cake went down a treat too. But apart from that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have you ever tried to make a proper authentic ramen? How'd it go? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye!